We're back for your ears only. I'm Melissa Axelberth. I'm David Alpern with this quote from the news. Today is a miraculous day. That was missionary Dr. Kent Bradley leaving Atlanta's Emory University Hospital after being cleared of Ebola contracted in Liberia, as was his fellow missionary Nancy Wrightbull secretly days earlier. To what degree they were helped by the untested drug ZMAP is not immediately clear. Brantley thanked God and urged continuing attention to the spreading epidemic in Africa, where the death toll approached 1,500. Now this. But it's a long, long while from May to December, and the days grow short when you reach September. Lucinda Franks was 26 years old with a Pulitzer Prize for sympathetic reporting on homegrown radicals when she first met Robert Morgenthau. He was more than twice her age, then the fierce federal prosecutor of New York and soon to become its legendary eight times re-elected Manhattan district attorney. From a prominent, powerful Jewish family, he was also a widower with five children. But it wasn't long before passion and pancakes next morning led to a wedding that was never supposed to happen. Franks recalls, and what is now nearly four decades of marriage. With more intimate details than some reviewers find comfortable, inside views of major Morgenthau cases and keen observation of the changing times, Franks demonstrates how gaps of age, origins, and politics can be bridged to make love last in a new memoir titled Timeless, Love, Morgenthau, and Me from Farrar, Strauss, and Giroux. And to talk about it all for your ears only, Lucinda Franks joins us now. Welcome to the program. Thank you, David. Nice to be here. How did you meet? I was a radical uh, anti-war protester, uh, someone who chained herself to fences and uh, threw pig's blood on draft files. I was with a draft dodger, draft resistor, and uh, he said, you, you should go and interview this guy Morgenthau because Nixon's just fired him and he's a good guy. And I was with United Press International, assigned to the burgeoning Watergate scandal. I went to uh, Morgenthau's office, and I asked so many detailed questions, even how to spell the names of congressmen, that at the end he said to himself, this is either the dumbest or the smartest reporter I've ever met. And uh, when he read my story, he decided I was the smartest. Talk about how your romance began. Well, he asked me to uh, party at Arthur Schlesinger's home, and we went there, and it was kind of a fairyland, a ghastly fairyland of women in silk and feather boas coiled around swan-thin necks. I was dressed in platform shoes and bell-bottoms and looked like a homeless person in, (laughs) in comparison to these society ladies. But when Jackie Kennedy walks through uh, the door, they dropped their jaws and was smiling dumbly at her. And I looked up at Bob, and he was smiling too, but not at Jackie. Morgenthau is only six years younger than your own father, about whom you wrote an earlier memoir, and like him, a taciturn World War II Navy veteran. Have you come to see that as part of his appeal to you, and has learning about each of them helped you understand the other? Absolutely. I uh, discovered that my father was a spy, Uh, for uh, the Navy and for the OSS during World War II. During the end of his life, found a Nazi uniform in his belongings. And uh, he had always been a very mysterious man. Uh, I couldn't really get hold of him. And I think that I married Bob much earlier than this discovery, partly because he was as mysterious as my father. And there was still that need to understand a man who couldn't be understood. And I got to know that both of them had post-traumatic stress syndrome of war. What about your obligations as a journalist? Did you keep his law enforcement secrets or did he keep them from you? We had a pact when we got married or before we got married, really, that I would never write uh, about anything that he told me in confidence about his cases. He also would not try to influence me in my writing. Let's talk about some high points of your husband's career. What does he consider his greatest achievement as a prosecutor? Well, he lobbied very early against the the death penalty 
and uh, he had a lot of opposition back when when there was, uh, you know, a very high crime in New York City in the late 70s. People wanted the death penalty, and finally he got the law changed uh, along with other people, but he led the fight. Talk about his early awareness of the terrorist threat that we came to know as al-Qaeda and the response he got from other government officials. Yes, he had a, a case, uh, the case of Meyer Kahane, who was an uh, uh, ultra-Orthodox rabbi, was murdered on the street by this terrorist. Uh, and boxes and boxes filled with plans for uh, bombing the World Trade Center, bomb materials, blueprints, tapes, and the FBI took them, uh, withheld them from the DA's office so the, D- so the DA couldn't investigate a terrorist conspiracy, and they never looked at them. Bob warned them that something else was going to come if they didn't examine the boxes, and sure enough, in 1993, a few years later, the World Trade Center was bombed from a, a truck bomb, you know, in the garage and killed several people. And this was a preamble to 9-11. Morgenthau is now 95. Do current prosecutors still come to him for advice? Oh, all the time. He has a line sometimes of people waiting outside his office from the law firm he works in. Finally, we have to ask about the age gap you bridged so successfully four decades ago. How does it look now, and how do you continue to deal with it? Well, it's a very interesting dilemma, because when, you know, there's, you're 30 years apart, and the older of you is 95, <clears throat> there are many things you can't do that you had always done together. But we all also find things that we have in common that we never had, knew we had in common before. So we have wonderful discussions. We have um, as passionate, intellectually, uh, as passionate a relationship as we ever had and other ways too. The new memoir by Lucinda Franks is timeless. Love, Morgenthau, and me from Farrar, Strauss, and Giroux. Quote from the news, policy is a machete, not a scalpel, and I think people will be more helped than harmed. That was Dr. Nathaniel Katz at Tufts University School of Medicine on the new Drug Enforcement Administration rule to tighten prescription practices for hydrocodone and prevent abuse of the popular painkiller. Next, how Fiddler went from that roof to Broadway and beyond, for your ears only.